This is by Hardik Bagde. Can you explain about the battle fought between Alexander and Porus, the battle of Hydaspes? Was King, King Porus a descendant of the Puru dynasty? Why is there no Indian textual evidence of this? Great question again. So whenever you have a conflict between two sides, between two parties or two nations or two cultures, then in order to get a good understanding of what truly happened, it behooves historians to look at what both sides have to say about it. So the history that we are taught today is of Alexander's invasion of India. He was a great king. He conquered everything. He came to India and he defeated this great, brave king Porus. And then his soldiers rebelled against him. And they said that we are very tired. We have been away from home for so many years. We want to go back. And so Alexander acquiesced to the demands of his army. And that's why he went back. But he was victorious in India and he could have gone further ahead if he wished to. So this is the history. This is the narrative that is taught to us. And this is an entirely Greek narrative. This is what the Greek historians have written about Alexander and his uh, supposed conquest of India. The strange thing is that Indian sources from that time are completely silent about Alexander. They do not mention Alexander at all, which is very strange, isn't it? If, if such a great conqueror came to India's western doorstep, then how come there is no Indian mention of this great invader, Alexander? And this battle, of the, which is supposed to have happened uh, at, at the banks of the river Jhelum, this battle happened in Punjab, in, in the Sapta Sindhu region. And the strange thing is that one of India's greatest universities of all time, Takshashila, also happened to be in Punjab, which is right next door, essentially, to the site of the battle. And this is a, one of the greatest universities of all time. You had so many professors of all kinds of different subjects, including uh, current affairs, political science, history, science, and whatnot. So if such an enormous and momentous battle happened right next door to Takshashila, how come none of India's scholars recorded this event and wrote some commentary or some sort of, uh, you know, some sort of record about it? How come there is no record of this battle at all? And how come there is no record of Alexander at all? And how come there is no Indian record of this king called Porus? Why is that so? And the strange thing is that after Alexander died, his general Seleucus Nicator became the overall king of the Greeks. And he again tried to invade India. And he entered eventually into an alliance with our emperor Chandragupta Maurya. So Indian records mention Seleucus Nicator extensively. And Seleucus Nicator is, is the king who comes right after Alexander. So it's just a question of a decade or so. And yet there is no mention of Alexander in Indian sources. So if one were to take this logically, it, it would indicate that Indian sources and Indian historians and Indian and the Indians of that time either did not take any notice of Alexander or they considered him to be not worthy of writing about, which would essentially tell you that his in invasion was no big deal. And it would essentially tell you that this king Porus that he is supposed, supposed to have defeated what must have been a very small king of some western outpost of India's boundary with Persia. So the Greeks talk about Porus like he was some great king who had a vast kingdom, but there is no mention of Porus in Indian texts. And so it would indicate that he was a minor king, a minor chieftain of a, of a border outpost of India. So the fact that there is no mention of Alexander or Porus at all in Indian sources would indicate that the story is very different from what the Greeks have told us. And th that's the th story that we, we learn about in our textbooks worldwide, including in India. So the Russian marshal, the, the great Russian marshal Zukov, who was one of the uh, Russia's great military strategists wrote about this. And he said that what really happened was that Alexander probably lost to this minor border chieftain, Porus. And the Greek sources later embellished the story and invented a story of Alexander defeating Porus and being forced back by the actions of his own soldiers. So I, I wonder why Indian historians have never taken up this angle. They have just 
blindly imbibed whatever the Greek historians have written about and whatever the Western historians write about. So I think it is time to look at India's history afresh because the story doesn't quite add up when it comes to Alexander's supposed invasion of India. What I believe happened is that he came to Western India. He tried to invade India. He had this ambition of invading India. He ran into a small border chieftain. And because this guy had elephants and uh, all that, that's why I believe that Alexander suffered a defeat in this skirmish with the Indian king. And we know that his horse died in this battle. And it is most likely that Alexander also got grievously injured in this battle with the Indians. And he had to go back to Babylon where he died. So I think that is the is, is what really transpired. We should not believe the Greek sources blindly. Because it is well known that Greek sources have been known to embellish and invent history. Herodotus, the father of history, the supposed father of history, is known to have invented fictitious lands and fictitious people, people with three heads and people with uh, three eyes and whatnot. And this is accepted as, as history today somehow. So it is time to revisit the history of India and revisit it from our own eyes and our own perspective. So that is what I really believe transpired when it comes to Alexander's supposed invasion of India. I think he suffered a calamitous loss in India and it eventually led to his death.